I love the uh, backdrop behind you. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> the um, mask and the artwork. That's awesome. Yeah, I was lucky enough. Some crazy fans that are crazy talented made me this. So that's like a prototype of the redhead mask. And then this is a pain, which I absolutely love. So that's awesome. It, it's so awesome. For you, you know, when you first signed on to the show, did they tell you they were going to be thinking about doing this kind of further down the line? Or, or when did you get clued in that they were going to do the you death know, in the family arc? Yeah, it's so funny. I, I like to share the story a lot because like when I first went out for Titans, I was like, I didn't even know what I was doing on the show. I didn't even know what it was for. It was kind of like a um, like dummy sides, you know, and a dummy character. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And then later down the road, a couple weeks later, I found out that I booked it. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to be some like, I thought I was just going to be some random background or a couple lines here and there. And they called me like, hey, you have a fitting, you're playing Robin. And I was like, all right, time to go get every comic book I can find on the character. So I went out and I did my research and I got everything I could find. And, you know, as far as the Red Hood arc, I had a feeling that they were going to go down that route. Um, I didn't find out till the end of season two, beginning of season three. So, yeah, it was... Um, it's, it's pretty awesome, and I, I absolutely love this character. Obviously, this version we're seeing is different from the comics. I know, you know, were you kind of relieved to see that he would be unmasked so early on in the season? Because, like, you don't have to keep it a secret. You actually get to show your face and be a part of it a lot more. Just, I guess, was that kind of a relief for you? Yeah. Um, as far as the fans go, obviously, they know that it's me, but... Yeah, it, it was it was kind of a it, it was a worrisome point to me. It was like, am I going to have the mask on all season? You know, yeah. so it was nice to have that, especially that Nightwing and Redhead fight in the beginning. Um, it was nice to have that and, and show my face throughout the season. And I guess what was your reaction to putting the costume on for the first time? And, and how does it compare to Robin's? Because they're totally different. Man, there were so many emotions when I put that thing on. First of all, you go through so many different fittings and all that i think the craziest part for me was putting on the helmet mm -hmm. um that was so cool and so different from the robin costume but as far as they as they compare they're both they're both pretty comfortable to be honest but they're both you know hard to maneuver in and whatnot um so they they have their pros and cons both of them and i mean taking on also all the the gunplay that Red yep. Hood has as well. What was the training like for that? Yeah, um, it was pretty intense. It's it's um so different from what we did with Jason Todd, obviously. Yeah. So you know, with COVID and whatnot, it, it was totally different on on the protocols and you can have on set and you can't have on set. So that was a little difficult. But um, we had a great stunt, uh, stunt team and and uh, we learned a lot there. But we actually brought in some trained military men who you know taught us. The, the, the simplicities of just walking around a corner and, and how your feet need to move and how you need to draw your gun and how you need to hold the gun and in hand placement. So we did that. Brenton and I did that together about three or four times throughout the season, which was very, very helpful. Um, so, yeah, as far as that, and then we just trained every week that I wasn't working and mm -hmm. try to perfect the character. <laughs> And I mean, you are now obviously fighting the Titans and you, you've had some great fights with Brenton, with Nightwing. Just what was it like kind of approaching those? And, and is it weird to kind of, you know, now be fighting against someone who was your teammate? Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess that's that's what you get with playing a villain, though. You know, you, you yeah. go out. Um, but yeah, it was a totally different dynamic. And when I first read that in the script, I was like, oh, okay like it's, it's kind of cool it's kind of badass that you know the first two seasons have this character who's, who's so like i don't know energetic and and, and and so loves his team and whatnot now to have this guy that just wants to go after his own people um you know it was a totally different dynamic and it was so fun to be a part of and obviously the big shock of the earlier episodes this season is hank's death and you know, yeah. your your character being responsible for it <laughs> How did you and Alan first react to seeing that? Did you kind of find out around the same time? I guess, how did that process go? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, we all kind of, we get the scripts, I think a couple days before our table reads. Um, so everyone has a chance to process all the emotions and stuff on their own. But yeah. when you actually do the table read, even though it was over Zoom, when you actually do the table read as a cast 
and you see how the lines are projected and whatnot. Um, it was really emotional. I mean, it was like, whoa, like Hank is leaving us. So I think, you know, the whole cast kind of felt on that. And um, Alan is amazing. We're going to miss him, but is what it is, I guess. It proves he's serious. I mean, it definitely was a shock. (laughs) And how have the fans, I know the fans have been really excited about this arc in general, but are they able to kind of separate you and the character now that he has done these terrible, terrible things? Yeah, yeah, right. Of course. I think they all know it. (laughs) Fake in a way. Um, You know, yeah, the fan support has been amazing since I first stepped on screen in season one, you know, they, yeah. they love what I've been doing. And this was obviously a totally different route. And then, and, um, you know, a risk on what I wanted to do with the character and, and the character development, because obviously we just have the animated version before this of, of yeah. Red Hood. It's hard to compare anything to. So, you know, I went out there, I did my thing. And then now that it's all out, I'm, I'm very happy with the feedback and for what the future holds. And how was it for you, especially, you know, episode five, the last one that aired last week, you had a really, you know, meaty episode, a lot of yeah. emotion coming from you. Great performance all around, I got to say. Yeah. But Thank you. But was that nice to kind of have that chance to really dig into it even more than usual? Yeah, that's that's that was one of my favorite uh, parts about the season. Just, you know, just to see how Jason became Red Hood and, and see what he went through and being able to explore that dynamic with Bruce a little more that the fans, I think, really wanted. Um, so yeah, that was that was probably one of my favorite episodes to film. And now this interview will go up the same day that episode six comes out. So we can oh, talk a couple yeah. spoilers for the Lady Vic episode. But, you know, the, the episode ends with Jason kind of releasing the toxin to the underworld of Gotham, kind yeah. of breaking free from Crane. But you do see him kind of experiencing some regret afterwards and, you know, then takes the toxin himself to numb those that senses. But is that something we're going to see him grapple with more going forward? And, you know, what are those regrets? What is that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think this is all Crane's doing, you know, it's, uh, he wants to, sorry. Oh, I, yeah. I thought it do not disturb, but guess not. <laughs> um, he wants to, he, he's struggling with who he is throughout the season, if that makes yeah. sense. You know, he's, uh, he's, wanting to be with the Titans. He was wanting not to be with the Titans and, and Crane really this fear gas that is being created and that Jason figures out how to make the potion. It's it, when he's not on the fear gas, he's really realizing, is this, did I write, make the right decisions? You know, especially yeah. after Hank, how is he going to live with his old family and everything? So, you know, I think that's a beautiful dynamic we explore throughout the season and, and Jason struggling with his emotions. I was going to say, it kind of seems like at this point, Jason might not have any allies because he is kind of breaking free from Crane in this episode. And obviously the Titans are not fans of him at the moment. Does, I guess who would be the bigger threat and, and yeah. what does his allies look like going forward? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess <laughs> so far, I guess the only ally he has is, is Crane, you know, but we get to explore that dynamic much more as the season goes on. And, and um, it's, it's a pretty fun thing. Yeah. And, you know, I got to ask if you were able to tease it all, you know, his, in, his interactions with Tim Drake coming up, obviously this episode ends with a big moment for Tim. It seems yeah. like the Robins are all going to cross paths at some point, probably just what are you able to tease if anything? Yeah. I, I think future seasons will explore that a little more. Okay. Uh, <laughs> more of a dynamic of giving each character their own story, not so much crossing paths so <laughs> and last question i have for you is what other dc character would you love to get on the show either as an ally or or a foe for for jason or the titans i mean hey i i know we can't and it always would um i mean we can and we can't we have but it's, we haven't actually i would like, like to have an actual batman costume interaction i would love to have an actual joker interaction not just the back of this you know what i mean right. but obviously <laughs> you know all that hey i would love someday to act with um margot robbie harley quinn i mean she's yeah, that would be great he's one of my favorites so if they want to throw me in a movie someday i'm, I'm here for it <laughs> <laughs> i like it i would love to see I'm it, here for it. <laughs> 
And yeah, I hope we get to see it too. I'd love to see Harley. I'd love to see all the sirens somehow oh, pop up it. on Titans somehow, at some fuck. point. It would, it would be an absolute mess in Gotham. So that'd be fun too. <laughs>